Hi, my name is Dave Peck, and I teach and research in Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands. Today, I would like to explore with you the history of critical materials. We will look at selected events over the 20th and into the 21st century. And although we could explore much further back in time, if only I had the time. Changes in demand and supply of materials has, through the 20th century, led to periods of material scarcity. And examples of this can be seen during wartime. But these problems are not just seen during times of conflict. And threats concerning the control of material supply has often led to increases in geopolitical tensions, which turn, in turn has led to wars breaking out. Whilst wars have been won due to control of material supplies, the reverse is also true where a key factor in the defeat of a country has been insufficient material supply. An example of this situation can be seen in World War I. By 1918, even though the German Imperial Army was still a formidable fighting force in the field, the collapse on the home front led to a rapid German defeat. This situation was to some extent the result of severe material supply difficulties within Germany. At the same time, the Allies were able to maintain and even increase their supplies. By the 1930s, the experience in World War I led some nations to feel they were threatened by lack of direct control of their own resources. Countries such as Germany, Italy and Japan felt they were have-not nations. That is to say, they did not have control and security of their own material supplies which in turn would restrict their freedom of action. They saw other countries such as Britain and the United States of America as the have nations who had all the materials they needed. It was, however, not the case. For example, in the late 1930s, Britain began to build up stocks of raw materials. At the same time, the United States began using the term critical materials when the United States government enacted the Strategic and Critical Materials Stockpiling Act of 1939. This act provided funding to purchase and stockpile strategic and critical materials deemed essential for military production. The material needs of Britain and the USA were derived from the material demand arising from the planned requirements of military equipment such as munitions, aircraft, ships, guns or vehicles. Of course, these events so long ago cannot be directly translated into actions and solutions today, not least in the complexity of the materials themselves. It can be seen in a comparison of the makeup of materials that widely used materials were, in terms of elements, less complex in the past. The tensions and difficulties around materials did not cease with the end of World War II. And by the late 1940s, geopolitical tensions grew again with fears over the expansion of communism, which led to the Cold War. This resulted in the United States again intensifying their material stockpile actions. In 1950, the Cold War turned hot with the outbreak of the Korean War. In just six months, the USA stockpiling budget increased from $2.9 billion, uh, and by 1956, uh, and following the end of the Korean War, it was around $10.9 billion. Over this period, the USA uh, set up the President's Material Policy Commission, which was tasked to assess if global resources could meet future USA demand. The subsequent report, called the Paley Report, predicted significant shortages based on estimations of future resource demand. The report proposed a range of technology innovations, developing domestic reserves and continuing stockpiling to overcome material constraint problems. For example, the Paley Report highlighted the increase of material requirements over a seven-year period for the first American jet fighter, the P-80, and for the F-94C, which was a later development of the same aircraft. 
In the 1970s, the American approach to critical materials was further developed. The Arab-Israeli conflict in 1973 led to a global oil crisis, with the United States experiencing a total oil embargo. The prices of materials also continued to rise due to economic growth in Japan, North America and Europe. From 1947 to 1971, Raw material prices had increased 21%. But from 1971 to 1973, those prices increased by 46%. At the same time, the book Limits to Growth was published, stating the world could not continually increase consumption without an eventual collapse. In 1977, the United States Congress published Engineering Implications of Chronic Material Scarcity, which was part of the conference series on the topic. This publication demonstrates a more complex and comprehensive approach the United States was developing towards critical materials. This approach laid the, laid the foundations of critical material approaches in the 21st century. The global situation continued to change from the late 1990s onwards with the rise of new technologies, globalized economic growth, increasing levels of waste, concerns over energy and climate, resource nationalism, and shifts in geopolitics, which together have combined to drive the need for the development of a more sophisticated approach to critical materials. This development has ensured that around 2006, critical materials had become a distinct field. The challenges shift over time, but they do not go away.